पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायण स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदा भगवद्गीते भगवदेशिनी नमोस्तु ते व्यास विशाल बुद्धे फुलाय सपत्र नेत्र ये नया भारत तैलपूर्ण प्रज्वालित ज्ञानमय प्रदीप प्रपन्न पारिजाताय स्त्रेत्रकपाणे ज्ञान मुद्रा कृष्णा गीतामृतदुहे नम सर्वोपनिषदो गावो दुग्धा गोपाल नंदन पार्थो वत्सुधीर्भोक्ता दुग्ध गीतामृत महत वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु भीष्मद्रोणतटा जयद्रथ जला गांधार नीलोत्पला शल्यग्राहवती कृपेण वहनी कर्णेन वेलाकुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोरमक दुर्योधना वर्तिनी सोतीर्णा खलु पांडवैरण नदी कैवर्तक केशव पाराशर्यवचरोजमल गीताकोत्कट नाख्यानकसर हरिकथा संबोधना बोधि लोके सज्जन षटर पेपीयम मुदा भूयाद्भारत पंकज कलिमल प्रध्वंसी न श्रेयसे मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यमह वंदे परमानंदमाधव यम ब्रह्मेन्द्र रुद्रमुत सुन्वती दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायनावस्थित तद्गते न मनसा पश्य यम योगिन युसुरा सुरगणा देवाय तस्म नम हरि धन्यवाद
नारायण पद्मुव वशिष्ठ शक्ति तत्पुत्र पराशर व्यासम शुक गौड़पद महांत गोविंद योगींद्रमथ से शिष्य श्रीशंकराचार्यमथ से पद्म पादम चस्त मलक शिष्य तोटक वार्तिकस्मत्गु सततमस्मी श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिण मूर्त नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ परम वरिष्ठ ब्रह्मीष्ट परमानंदिण परमाताति सद्गु प्रणतस्म्यहम सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट टू डेज क्लास आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू यू नो चेक फॉर फीडबैक फ्रॉम अ फ्यू सीनियर स्पिरिचुअल सीकर्स अबाउट वॉट आई स्पोक यस्टडे मोर बिकॉज I would like to know what you all felt, and it was so beautiful that Shankara Charya had interpreted Shloka sixty one, which we completed in the last class, right? We completed sixty two, so sixty one he completed before that. Ishvara ha sarva bhuta nam ridde shayat juna bhaktishtati Brahmayan sarva bhuta ni yantra roda ni maya ya. The subtle difference between the two different factors fate and free will that is prarabdha and or vasana janita the karma that is there in the karana shariram and the difference between what is there in the sukshma shariram which is you know your free will which your intellect acts and makes you or directs you to do certain things that subtle difference between the two aspects of what is there connected to the sukshma shariram and what is connected to the karna shariram i thought personally that it was a very beautiful way that acharya had presented and that is why i uh, decided to speak about it in yesterday's class normally swami ji doesn't do that in the normal geeta course but only in the bhashyam course so in case you did not get the point please go back and listen to it again and you can come back to me on mail or we can discuss it even in the subsequent classes a very interesting way of uh, putting that across as ishwara the antaryami right the indweller through what through the karma prarabdha karma we know about sanchita karma but all of the karma aspects through that ishwara is acting as the antaryami through the different jivas that's what we saw in the verse 61 then we completed verse 62 also so lord krishna is summarizing the two main spiritual sadhanani as a concluding part of the entire teaching the two main spiritual exercises being karma yoga and jnana yoga and both of them are compulsory for everyone and both of them have to be followed sequentially initially the life is karma yoga pradana and jnana yoga exposure to the teaching can be there and as even a person continues karma yoga 
the mind becomes more and more mature and the value of moksha will be understood so the very desire for moksha or ishwara itself is not that easy to get if at all we are interested in god in the initial stages not because we love him as an end we look at him as a means to fulfill our various worldly projects worldly goals shifting that right to the lord himself is a journey right so until this maturity comes one has to continue with karma yoga and there is a casual approach to jnana yoga teaching as even the value of moksha increases one gets more and more interested in the study of the scriptures with the guidance of an acharya and it becomes so intense right and the desire for moksha therefore the desire for jnana the desire for a guru all this becomes stronger and stronger exactly like as pujya swami ji says initially we are interested in toys right and the parents buy a lot of toys just imagine if the parents have to continue to buy toys when the children are past adolescence if right? something is really wrong then right so they have to naturally grow out of that toys right so desire replacement or refinement is spiritual growth right so when the desire for moksha gnanam and guru right now starts coming it means that the person is gradually maturing and the other desires will appear exactly like the balloon and the teddy bear of the children right this cannot be forced upon by any guru the internal growth has to gradually happen so karma yoga brings about refinement in desire once these three desires become so intense then a person can gradually change the proportion of karma yoga and gradually increase the proportion of shravana manana and niti dhyasana thus from a karma yoga pradana life to a jnana yoga pradana life is the spiritual journey so krishna keeps on repeatedly emphasizing both the yogas karma yoga then he talked about jnana yoga emphasizing niti dhyasana right vedantic meditation then krishna came back to karma yoga once again shifting the emphasis previously the emphasis was in choosing an appropriate occupation or profession so that the person can you know be involved in pancha mahayagna and arjuna's character being a kshatriya character and he is in the battle field right and he is fighting a dharma yuddha to establish the order of the society so krishna said in the second chapter itself dharma di yuddha chreyonyat kshatriyasya na vidyate you are a kshatriya and you have to fight for the sake of dharma and now your character is rajasik so you are fit to do that job therefore don't imagine relinquishing the battle field and going to rishikesh right so then he spoke about the attitude ishwararpana bhava and ishwara prasada bhava so in verse 62 we actually saw tameva sharanam gacha sarva bhavena bharata tat prasadat param shanti sthanam prapsyasi shashvatam o arjuna surrender to him alone wholeheartedly by his grace you shall attain supreme peace and the eternal abode so now krishna is reemphasizing one last time why krishna knows arjuna used to he enjoyed fighting wars and he has won several laurels and belt he is called dhananjaya but now he has to fight, fight his own near and dear ones and therefore the duty is an unpleasant painful duty therefore he talks about sanyasa so we all talk about sanyasa when we have problems right when the situation changes we want to renounce the thought of sanyasa right nice children nice spouse grandchildren if all of them are sweet and everything is going through okay then if somebody speaks about sanyasa they get very wild right that's what happens so therefore he says right jnanam akhyatam the teaching has been given to you what type of teaching not an ordinary teaching these teachings are available only in our scriptures and it has been given to you this teaching is guhya guhyataram the most 
the most secretive among all secrets right we completed this in the last class i'm just repeating the last few lines right raja vidya raja guhyam we saw earlier right it is the biggest secret right and after thorough analysis yatha ichasi i am not going to tell you whatever you want to do tatha kuru may you do that so krishna gives the freedom right to arjuna but in the heart of heart krishna has a concern also even when he says right do what you want because of his love for arjuna and arjuna is his friend and his disciple krishna seems to have some worry that arjuna may thoughtfully make a wrong choice so therefore he says before you take the last decision once again i would like to summarize the gita and his heart is beating fast right because he is concerned and he is his friend so arjuna listen to me 64 sarva guhyadamam bhuya ha sarva guhyadamam bhuya ha shunu me paramam vaja ha shunu me paramam vaja ha ishto si me dridamite ishto si me dridamite tato vakshyami te hitam tato vakshyami te hitam so krishna wants arjuna to choose the right course of action but krishna does not want to compel arjuna to do what he wants therefore since he does not want to command or compel he makes his last bit of effort saying that once again i will summarize the whole teaching and what is krishna's expectation is that arjuna knows the value of karma yoga and he will fight the war as a karma yogi and then he will give more importance to jnana yoga right pradana life and he will attain moksha this is krishna's expectations now karma yoga fighting the war and jnana yoga pradana gaining knowledge later this is krishna's expectation and remember he does not want to command he wants arjuna to take a decision on his own therefore he says bhuyaha once again already i have se summarized several times but once again sarva guhya tamam the greatest secret on earth in the form of this gita wisdom paramam vachaha this is the supreme words right of mine of the lord right and this is the essence of all the vedas also therefore paramam vachaha the supreme words of mine may you shunu listen and why, why am i repeating it again and again ishtaha asi asi tvam right so you are very very dear to me and i am concerned about you i am worried that you may take the wrong decision not ordinarily dear dridam ishtaha you are very very dear to me tataha te hitam vakshyami so i am giving you what is good for you right so the final summary of gita the very final in two verses 65 is summary of karma yoga once again and 66 the most famous shloka summary of jnana yoga man mana bhava mat bhakta ha man mana bhava mat bhakta ha madhya ji mam namaskuru madhya ji mam namaskuru mame vaishyati satyam te mame vaishyati sat mame vaishyasi satyam te pratijane priyo si me pratijane priyo si me is all madhyama purusha because krishna is addressing arjuna okay so lord krishna is summarizing the entire gita teaching in this chapter right and highlighting the two main yogas of karma yoga and jnana yoga right so he is summarizing the two topics and in 64th verse he said he'll talk about the secret of bhagavad gita so the 65th verse is the summary of karma yoga and the 66th verse is summary of jnana yoga with the 66th verse the entire teaching part of the gita is over right so from 67 onwards krishna talks about the qualifications of the student qualifications of the teacher etc so the main teaching is over with these two verses 65 and 
So in 65th shloka, Lord Krishna summarizes Karma Yoga in the form of four exercises. The first one is Mad Bhaktaha Bhava. May you accept the existence of Ishwara and may you learn to relate with that Ishwara as Bhaktaha, understanding that all other relationships are only temporary. May you appreciate this relationship with Bhagavan as the most fundamental relationship in the form of Bhakta and Bhagavan. So this being the most fundamental and enduring relationship, you should learn to develop, nourish, cherish this relationship and learn to rely more and more on this relationship because everything else in this creation are subject to an end. They are temporary and ephemeral. So the appreciation is the Bhagavan Bhakti relationship. So initially we have Bhakti towards the Lord and we use that Bhakti to accomplish worldly goals. In due course, a Karma Yogi is one who discovers all those worldly goals are intermediary and they are all finite goals, right? And we are using the infinite God for getting finite ends. Then one realizes, right? What is an intelligent bargain? So Karma Yogi is one who has decided God as the final destination of his life. All other things like education, getting married, getting children, educating them, all these are there. But they are like intermediary stations in a long journey. None of them can be treated as the destination. So the destination has to be an enduring one, right? That is the Lord. Bhagavan as the ultimate destination. So the second principle of Karma Yoga is Man Manaha Bhava and don't be an Artha Bhakta or Artharthi Bhakta which we saw yesterday. May you become a Jignasu Bhakta who treats Bhagavan as the ultimate destination. Then the third exercise of Karma Yoga is Madhyaji Bhava. May you convert all your worldly activities including the religious activities and your, you know, whatever activities you do with your family, profession, etc. as a form of worship to Ishwara, right? We saw that. Karmana sambhyasya siddhim vindati manavaha. So may you convert all your activities into worship. We saw this earlier, right? So karma yoga is the method through which I seek the qualifications required for attaining the destination of God. Therefore, May you convert the very life into a worship. Madhyaji bhava. Yaji means yajanakarta. Doing the yaga. Make every karma to a puja and give it and surrender it to the Lord. So this is the third exercise. And the fourth exercise is Maam Namaskuru. Even though we have put forth all the efforts to attain the destination, because Bhagavan has given us the free will, we have to choose our goal and we have to work for our goal. Bhagavan will give the result of the effort, but Bhagavan never chooses the goal for ourselves because each individual has his own desire and Bhagavan has given us the willpower to decide, right? So effort is one part of the spiritual sadhana and the other part, grace of the Ishwara, is also very, very important. Therefore, never become arrogant. So the spiritual sadhanas are riddled with several obstacles. Obstacles can come in any manner. Adhyatmikam, at the body level, obstacles can come. Adhibhautikam, obstacles can come in the form of family members, right, who may not like you going to the class, who may not like you sharing, uh, you know, Gita Upanishad with others. Anything can happen, right, but you require the cooperation of the family members. So, Adi Bhautika Pratibandha Rahitvam. Then Adi Daivika, the natural forces like rain, floods, right? Even viruses, all of them, right? So, that is the third kind. And that is why we have a Dhyana Shloka and we also say Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti three times to take care of the Adhyatmika, Adi Bhautika and Adi Daivika obstacles, Pratibandha. Okay, so therefore the fourth one is surrendering to the Lord to clear the path, right? 
So we must remember that karma yoga will never give the moksha, but it will prepare a person for jnana yoga in two ways. The first one is desire for jnana, it will generate. So I will have exposure to consistent and systematic study of the scriptures, right? So I have to go through it for a length of time, right? If I just have desire, it is not enough because I may not have opportunity, right? So karma yoga will give desire and opportunity for jnana yoga. And once a person comes to jnana yoga, jnana knowledge and liberation will take place, right? So this is given in the next verse. And here Krishna says, Mama, Mam Eva Eshyasi, in the second line, by going through Jnana Yoga, you will attain me finally. Satyam Te Bhagavan is giving a guarantee card, not one year or three years. Guarantee that you, you will attain me by going through these two yogas. Right? This is the truth. And Pratijane, I am willing to give you a promise. Pratignam Karomi. Right? Why, why am I doing all this? Because me Priyaha Asi, because you are dear to me both as a friend, as a bhakta, and as a shishya. Arjuna is three in one, right? So, now comes the final Jnana Yoga summary, one of the most famous verses of the Bhagavad Gita. So, the final meaning of this verse is, fix the mind on me, my devotee, right? Be my devotee, my worshipper, surrender to me and you shall reach me alone. Truly do I promise you, right? You are very dear to me. Sarva dharman parityajya Sarva dharman parityajya Mamekam sharanam braja Mamekam sharanam braja Aham twa sarva pape biaha. Aham twa sarva pape biaha. Moksha ishyami mashucha. Moksha ishyami mashucha. Shankaracharya in his commentary presents this shloka as jnana yoga summary. But there is a problem in this shloka. You have to be very attentive during the next few slides. You can also go back and listen to it again. But there is a problem in the shloka because even though it is a summary of Jnana Yoga, Lord Krishna does not use the word Jnanam in the shloka. He only says, Maam ekam sharanam, Maam evam sharanam praja, Maam ekam, right? Maam ekam sharanam praja, surrender unto me. The word surrender can be interpreted by different people in different manner. No wonder we will have Vishishta Dvaitins interpreting it differently, Dvaitins are interpreting it differently. I am not going there because we should not get confused. So let us look at what Shankaracharya says. So the word surrender can be interpreted by different people in different manner. So one person may sing the glories of the Lord. Another person may say do Namaskara and permanently lie down. Right? After surrender, you should not get up. Therefore, different people can interpret the word surrender in different ways. Therefore, we should know what is the intention of Krishna. Shankaracharya brilliantly arrives at this meaning based on certain important reasons and he does it methodically. He's so good. Okay, Shankaracharya is very good in analyzing the scriptures, especially the Bhagavad Gita. One of the most beautiful, but most confusing in some parts, right? Because we always start wondering what is the central theme of the Bhagavad Gita. And I don't want any of you to get confused at the end of the 66th shloka. So I've decided that the next full set of slides, right? I will spend on this. And if required, we'll also revisit next class, okay? So Bhagavad Gita talks about karma also, karmani kuru. Right? Then it keeps on saying, do karma, do karma. Then it does talk about bhakti or devotion to the Lord. Right? In so many places it talks in the middle chapters, meditation. Right? Then it talks about yoga, meditate. Right? All ideas are talked about. So what is the central theme of the Bhagavad Gita? A very big issue. Debated by several acharyas. 
So Shankaracharya comes to the following conclusion based on certain important reason. Okay. First he says that Bhagavad Gita is based on the Veda. Very powerful argument. Right. It is not an independent teaching of Krishna. Because Krishna repeatedly says that I am teaching the very same teaching which has been coming down. I don't have anything new to teach. Right? Saha Eva Yogaha. The Vedic teaching alone I am giving. Veda talks about moksha as the greatest goal of the human life. And Lord Krishna also talks about moksha as the greatest goal. Now we have to ask the question. Right? For moksha or freedom? What is the primary means that it is talking about? So whatever Veda presents as the main sadhana, that must be the sadhana prescribed in the Gita also. Why? Because Gita is following the footsteps of Veda. In the Veda, we have been, we will be seeing Upanishads, right? So in many Upanishads, right, almost in all of them, right, I think I should say all of them, it has been declaring that moksha can be attained only by one method. Because the problem is caused by ignorance, agnyanam being the problem, jnanam alone is the solution. So in Shweta Shvatara Upanishad, also it says, right, it is said without jnanam, you can accomplish moksha, right? Very, very mischievous, right? If you want to get moksha, you should fulfill one condition without jnanam. What is that? You have to go to one corner of the earth and you can see the sky touching there. You have to roll the sky from one end to other and submit to Bhagavan. And Bhagavan will give you moksha without knowledge. So what is the message? You can't roll the sky. Therefore, without spiritual knowledge, moksha can't be attained. Yada charmavada kasham veshtaishyanti manavaha Tada Deva Mavikyaya Dukya Syanto Bhavishyati. Shweta Ashwatra Upanishad 620. So, like that, we have hundreds of mantras, right? Veda says, Jnana Eva Kaivalyam. All the other disciplines are meant for preparation only. Whether you call it karma, whether you call it bhakti, whether you call it upasana, whether you call it pranayama, whether you call it ashtanga yoga. Nama Sankirtanam, any blessed thing, whatever you call, right? They all can help not in getting moksha, but in getting mental refinement. So after refinement, you have to come to jnana. So this is the declaration of the Upanishad. And we must keep on remembering that Krishna also repeats that. Because sometimes in between, in order to focus on something else, he might have gone into that temporarily. But because of that, you can't say that the theme has changed, right? In many books, we see that, right? So this central theme should be there like a Shruti. Krishna is taking from the Upanishad. Therefore, this is the main theme, right? This is one of the first and important arguments that Shankaracharya puts forth, right? And he says, in the Gita itself, in, in verse 5, right? 15, uh, in chapter 5, verse 15, right? He says, Ajnane Navritam Jnanam Tena Muhyanti Jantavaha. Discrimination is veiled by ignorance, hence the beings are deluded. He says that, Krishna. Jnane Natu Tadda Jnanam Esham Nashita Matmanaha Esham Aditya Vajnanam Prakashayati Tatparam. Again, in the next, very next verse, however, knowledge illumes that supreme Atma, like the sun, for those whose ignorance. Right? For the Atma is destroyed by knowledge. So in the fifth chapter, Krishna said our problem is ignorance and therefore the solution is Jnanam. So even if you start with Karma, you have to come to Jnanam. Sarvam Karma Khilam Partha Jnane Parisamapyate. Start with Karma. You do Puja and all those things you do. But Puja is not enough. You have to come to the knowledge. Similarly, bhaktya mama pijanati. You can start with bhakti, nama sankirtanam, sita kalyanam, etc. You can do all wonderful things, but ultimately you have to come to jnanam.
So how to get the Jnanam, right? That also Krishna said, right? Tatvidhi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya. May you get that Jnanam by approaching a Guru, right? Thus everyone will have to convert into spiritual education program under a Guru. This is the central theme of Veda and Gita being the essence of Veda, Gita also has Jnanam, right? But it, it is the central theme, right? So in Bhagavatam, there is a Stuti, okay, called Bhishma Stuti, a brilliant Stuti in which Bhishma glorifies the Lord. So one of the glorification he gives in a beautiful shloka is in Mahabharata battlefield, Arjuna had the problem of delusion. So through the entire teaching, Krishna gave self-knowledge to Arjuna. To that Krishna, I offer my namaskaram, right? From that, what is clear? The central theme of Gita is self-knowledge alone, right? It goes like this. Vyavahita pritanamukam nirikshya svajana vadat vimukhasya dosha buddhya kumatim aharat atma vidhyaya yash charana ratihi paramasya tasya mesku, right? So, when Arjuna was surrounded with infatuation of his relatives in the Kaurava army, he began to sweat and he felt dizzy and dropped his bow. Who is saying this? Bhishma is saying this. He said, Arjuna said, Keshava, I will not fight. At that time, to make, to take away Arjuna's infatuation and delusion, right? You, Krishna, presented the Gita, Atma Vidya in Kurukshetra, right? So let me develop love in the divine field of such a Lord Krishna, the author of Gita. Right? And we must remember that Bhagavatam is written by Vyasa. Bhagavad Gita is written by Vyasa. Vyasena Gratitam Purana Muninam. Therefore, it is clearly stated that Jnanam is the central theme. Thus Shankaracharya argues that according to the scriptural rules, Whatever be the central theme of teaching that must be presented in the beginning and the end. Upakrama, Upasamhara, right, must be present for the central theme. What is Upakrama, Upasamhara? Beginning and end. Exactly like you see news, right, first the headlines will start, right. Basically, what is happening now, coronavirus, which state is having a problem, etc. Then, they will get into all the discussions, etc. And then at the end of it, they'll say, to end the news, the headlines again. So there are some people who will only join for the headlines. Some people will join at the end, right? So, Upakrama Upasamhara Nyayaha. This is called in Sanskrit also. It was very much followed. So, Shankaracharya says, if that rule has to be followed, the central theme must be in the beginning of the Gita also. The central theme must be at the end of Gita also. The beginning we find in the second chapter where Krishna starts the teaching, right? So, where did the teaching start? Do you remember? Right? Because I don't know how many of you were even there at that time, right? And it is almost three years back. So, Krishna started the teaching in the second chapter, 11th verse. Ashochyanan vashoshastvam pragnya vadamsya bhashase. Gatasuna gatasuncha nanushochanti panditaha in 211. So, all forms of sorrow is samsara, and samsara is caused by ignorance. What ignorance? Not physics or chemistry or mathematics. It is self ignorance alone which is the cause of all forms of human grief. Therefore, the solution is panditaha na anushochanti. Those who are panditaha, meaning wise, they don't have grief. Therefore, by using the word panditaha, Krishna presents the central theme as what? Jnana yoga. Because pandita means they have studied jnana, right? They have attained jnana. Therefore, or they have studied, they have gathered knowledge. Therefore, Shankaracharya says, if jnana is the central theme of the Veda, if jnana is the central theme of the Gita, and if jnanam is given in the beginning part of the teaching, jnanam alone must be given at the end also. Just look at the beauty of 
you know how later on we see a lot of researchers this is how they you know conclude their research and you know they write their conclusion etc it is so beautifully present so therefore he says if gnanam is the central theme of the veda if gnanam is the central theme of the gita and if gnanam is in the beginning part of the teaching gnanam loan must be given at the end also so sarva dharman parityajya happens to be the final verse right and from the next verse krishna is saying idam te natapaskaya all other things therefore since this is the charama shloka right sarva dharman here is called charam charama shloka means the ending shloka the gita's ending shloka right so the concluding shloka therefore shankaracharya says sharanagati means knowledge and knowledge alone so what knowledge self knowledge and how does krishna present the knowledge in the shloka we have to see he says sarva dharman parityajya so the word dharma according to shastra is all the scriptural instructions they are all called dharma so according to the tradition the meaning of the word dharma is all the scriptures instructions which we are supposed to follow for attaining the scriptural goal of moksha okay right? so chodana lakshana arthah dharma so this is a definition of dharma given by jaimini maharshi in purva mimamsa ka sutram where dharma is defined therefore sarva vaidika karmani activity is described by the scriptures which is an ex- which is by extension including the worldly actions also so dharmani includes laukika vaidika cha karmani all the noble activities both scriptural and worldly krishna says may you renounce all noble activities renounce then naturally we will get a doubt does it mean that is very convenient right advice for us which we can follow what should we do adharma shankaracharya says that the renunciation of the adharma activities krishna has already mentioned in the 16th chapter asuri sampat parityaga therefore sarva adharma parityaga karmani parityajya means that is renunciation of the adharma he is already covered in the 16th chapter here in the 18th chapter krishna says may you renounce the noble activities also so what happened all good and bad actions all of them may you renounce is the literal meaning of the first quarter sarva dharman sarva adharman cha parityajya which means sarva karma tyagah now this creates a problem how can we renounce all these activities because for survival we require activities including breathing eating bathing right krishna himself he has said himself in two places that nobody can renounce all the activities nahi kashchit shanam api jatu tishanti akarma kriti in the third chapter in the 18th chapter krishna has said nobody can renounce all the activities and here in the 66th verse krishna says renounce all activities so krishna has been very mischievous just like his childhood days right so you may remember we have already seen very very pithy and mischievous shlokas earlier where did we see we saw karmani akarmayat pashyet karmani cha akarmaya akarmaya saw this then we also saw matstani sarva bhutani na cha matstani bhutani another place you can't renounce all the karmas may you renounce all the karma right so now what will happen we can get confused right so problem if you start thinking you will have problems right if we stop thinking there is no difference between animals and us we saw this in the introduction to vedanta ahara nidra bhaya maitunam cha samanyam etat pashubir narana buddhirhi tesham adiko vishesha buddhya vihinam pashubir samana ha so how can we renounce the thinking right so we have to use the buddhi right therefore we have to think right and then arrive at the appropriate meaning and shankaracharya extracts the vedantic teaching in this statement so how does shankaracharya convey the teaching he says when a person says i am doing karma or i am renouncing karmas right or performance of karma or renunciation 
it is only possible by a karta a doer because the doer alone can do the karma and drop the karma and karanam also the tyaga is possible only by a karta now shankaracharya says a person looks upon himself as a karta a doer because of self ignorance throughout the gita krishna has been repeating this that i look upon myself as a doer of action only because of ignorance because my real nature is atma and atma is never a doer of any action right he has started this from the second chapter itself right yayenam veti hantaram yashchainam manyate hatam ubhav tauna vidanikah nayam hantina hanyate my my higher nature is atma which is brahman which is chaitanyam which is all pervading and therefore it is neither karta nor bhokta body is only a temporary medium i use i am not the body and i am neither a karta nor a bhokta i look upon myself as karta and bhokta doer and enjoyer because of my identification with the body right so prakrite kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashah अहंकार विमूडात्मा कर्ताहम इति मन्यते इन चैप्टर 3 वर्स 27 कृष्णा टॉक्ड अबाउट इट द डेल्यूडेड पर्सन हु मिस्टेक्स द बॉडी टू बी हिमसेल्फ और हरसेल्फ एंड एंड क्लेम्स आई एम कर्ता राइट एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट कर्मा राइट बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट द कर्मा कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग संचित कर्मा आगामी कर्मा प्रारब्ध कर्मा ओके सी आई थिंक this was somewhere not i had it okay so the deluded person mistakes the body to be himself right that is the problem and shankaracharya says it happens in a very different manner which is described in the fourth chapter of the gita in fact to understand the shloka we have to gather from all the chapters that is shankaracharya's brilliance right he says the total renunciation of all karmas happens only through knowledge so fourth chapter if you see is titled what karma sanyasah by the mere knowledge that i am not the body mind complex right indriyani paran yahuhu indriyebhya param manah manasastu parabuddhi yo buddhehe paratastu maksah so i am the sakshi chaitanyam the consciousness principle which is akarta and abhokta the moment i claim my higher nature i have renounced all the karmas renunciation of karma is renunciation of the notion that i am doing the karma so karma abhimana tyagah kartavya tyagah is called sarva karma parityagah renunciation of all actions or renunciation of identification with all actions right that that notion that i am a karta right and understanding that i am the atma tattvam right is the spiritual essence therefore sarva dharman parityajya is according to vedanta coming from tvam pada vachyartha to tvam pada lakshyartha um i'm not getting into the full details of what is vachyartha and lakshyartha vachyartha is a simple meaning which is aham body lakshyartha is when you are associating yourself and claiming the atma okay i am the same chaitanyam sakshi chaitanyam behind the jiva and paramatma i'm over simplifying it but I, this is the only way i can tell you quickly right so is according to vedanta it's coming from tvam pada vachyartha to tvam pada lakshyartha aham chaitanyam then what is the next one mahavakyam so shankaracharya brings the vedanta mahavakyam in this shloka mam ekam sharanam vraja once you understand i am the consciousness enclosed within this body i am not the enclosure body but i am the enclosed consciousness right like the space enclosed within the pot or this hall right once i know i am this enclosed consciousness the next one is claiming 
that the chaitanyam within this body is not different from the chaitanyam which is all pervading which is called brahman right the krishna paramatma right so the all pervading chaitanyam is krishna paramatma therefore mam refers to brahma chaitanyam tatvatartha lakshyartha the krishna paramatma the jeevatma may you surrender to right to mam mam means krishna is using the word mam as the paramatma krishna right which is ekam ekam eva advitiyam the non dual brahman he is using the word ekam right therefore sharanagati is nothing but merger or oneness so how does the merger take place not by traveling but by understanding that there is no difference between the enclosed consciousness and all pervading consciousness just as the space within the hall and the space outside the hall is nothing but one space we don't have two spaces because space is one indivisible whole right so it's exactly like that the chaitanya right the five features of consciousness we must remember right jeevatma is none other than the all pervading paramatma this understanding this aikya gnanam through the mahavakyam tat tvam asi the guru says you are the jeevatma the enclosed consciousness and krishna is the paramatma the all pervading consciousness you the jeevatma and krishna the paramatma both are one and the same tat tvam asi and the shishya must say not tat tvam asi he will say aham brahma asmi not brahma brahma asmi right so this jeevatma paramatma aikya gnanam is the final sharanagati the ninth level of navavida bhakti in navavida bhakti shavanam kirtanam vishnoho smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam shakyam atma nivedanam atma nivedanam is surrendering the jeevatma to the paramatma thus there is no jeevatma paramatma difference there is only ekatma i started with dasoham dasoham dasaha aham right which is called karma yoga and jnana yoga has to end with soham saha aham aham brahmasmi therefore i don't have karma there is no question of renouncing karma only if it is there i have to renounce therefore right because as akarta atma i don't have karma at all there is no question of renunciation right so this renunciation is called jnana karma sanyasah so mam ekam sharanam braja right so krishna says aham once you merge into me and discover the fact that you are a karta like me sarva papebhyah moksha ichyam ishyami i shall free you from all the papams this alone krishna said in the fourth chapter jnanaagni sarva karmani basmasat kurute tatha you can do several prayaschitam to remove some of the karmas but if you want to remove all the karmas there is only one method jnanam alone will wipe out all the karmas sanchita agami prarabdha not only papa karmas according to the scriptures even punya karmas are bondages because they will lead to punarapi jananam punarapi maranam right one gives sorrow by arriving the other gives sorrow by departing so when the punya ends we are left high and dry tetam bhuktva svargalokam vishalam shine punye martya lokam vishanti in the ninth chapter 21st verse we saw therefore both of them will give problem by arrival and departure therefore punyam is also considered to be a golden shackle therefore moksha is transcending both punyam and papam tata tada vidwan punya pape viduya niranjana paramam somyam upaiti mundaka upanishad tells this and in kato upanishad we see anyatra dharma anyatra adharma we don't require punyam or papam initially we give up papa and use the punyam for getting guru shastram and jnana use the punyam for getting guru shastram jnanam chitta shuddhi 
Once we get that, we transcend both punyam and papam, and that is what is said here. Aham tava sarva pape pyaha moksha ishyami. I will liberate you, and once you get freedom, ma shuchaha, may you not grieve, right? That grief is overpowering, which we saw in the first chapter, right? In the very first chapter, in the eighth verse, um, actually in the second chapter, eighth verse, he spells it out. He says, Nahi prapashyami mama panutyad yachoka mutchoshanam indriyanam avapya bhumava sapatnam riddham rajyam suranam api chadipatyam. Arjuna said, my grief is so deep that even by getting the position of Indra, by getting Swarga, by getting anything in life, I don't think this grief will go away. In fact, with this grief, I don't want to live this life. Right? He was about to commit suicide also. He was in that state. Krishna says, if the grief, grief has to go away permanently, the only solution is Jnanam. Therefore, may you gain this knowledge and Ma Shuchaha, may you not grieve through this method. Right? So, if you see in the beginning shloka also, he starts with grief and here also he ends with freedom from grief through Pandita, here Sharanagati, right? Both means what? Becoming one with the Ishwara. With this Ishwara Aikya Jnanam, otherwise called Sharanagati, Atma Nivedana Bhakti. So, Lord Krishna concludes the teaching of the entire Bhagavad Gita in this verse, right? We will see the concluding verses later, right? So, this is the final meaning of this verse. Having renounced all actions, seek me, the non-dual, right? As your shelter, I shall liberate you from all sins. Do not grieve. Now, this is a verbal kind of meaning. You must bring all these various shlokas and connect them in order to make sense. I think in the, I have used a wrong version of the PowerPoint. I have actually put down all these shlokas also. So I will upload that. Whatever shlokas I referenced, it will be useful for you later on. Right? So verse number 67 marks the entry into the concluding portion of the uh, Gita. So my, I think it is better that I take this up in the next class and I will also quickly summarize this so that you don't forget being a very, very important shloka, verse number 66. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Okay, next class is 22nd May, right? Saturday, 6.25. And uh, most likely we will, we may or may not be able to complete it on that day. But on 23rd, I will complete and do the summary. And on 29th, hopefully, I will do the overview of the Gita, the complete Gita. And on 30th, we have uh, the Gita Mahatmyam session. Uh, Professor Mahadevan has also um, you know, consented to come um, attend the class, be there and say a few words at the end of the Gita Mahatmyam. Any of you who want to speak also on that day a few words because there are many of you who have joined me on this entire journey and I also see that 100 plus people actually are very regular in listening to this uh, within 24 hours to 48 hours of actually hosting it. So, any of you who wants to speak also a few words on your journey, how has it impacted you? you please come prepared on 30th. Let me see if there are any questions. Yeah, somebody has raised the hand one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ha, I was kind of, madam, what will, 
what will be the assigned task once you reach moksha you merge with uh, that uh, infinite uh, this thing but uh, afterwards what happens as the jeevan mukta right mm. right through your life in fact i think you should listen to what swami ji spoke about uh, to swami omkarananda's tribute that he gave it's there on yogamalika.org wonderful right so once you attain within double quotes moksha you live a life as a jeevan mukta exactly what i just covered renouncing the tatvam and the okrutvam right you live that kind of life without any stress and you give your best to the society right and then at the fall of the body right the eighth mukti which i covered in introduction to the data the the sukshma uh, shariram the tarak uh, shariram and the corresponding reflective material for it is just all the vyakti knows it is much that is how we define the vedaha mukti so why the person is living you will see the quality of the jeevan mukti hmm yeah it's too much noise i think yeah did it answer okay madam yeah i'll have to go through the video to capture all you covered today yes both last class and this class there is a lot that we will have to you know kind of assimilate from the shankara bhashyam in order to understand the exact meaning and you know how he has covered but brilliant it is and that is what swami ji tried to summarize and that's exactly what i have summarized just listen once again and i will also do a brief summary before i get in uh, next saturday because in a week's time i'm sure again some of these things you would have forgotten so we'll do that anybody else wants to say anything or has any questions yeah request is please uh, download the pdf because i think i used the wrong pdf because i had put in all the shlokas so that it will be easy for you to reflect rather than speak right but i think i saved it incorrectly so i will send you that correct version so request you to download that and then use the video if you are advising okay thank you very much dhanyavaadah we will meet next week next saturday 625